This lesson is going to cover several of the key terms that need to be understood about network media. So we're going to be looking at these definitions. Now the first definition we need to address is a common problem with all network media types, and that's called attenuation. Attenuation is a naturally occurring phenomenon, and basically it is degradation of signal over distance. So as you have a longer cable, and you are transmitting from one end of that cable at the source to a destination at the other end of that cable, the signal will degrade over distance. So the longer the cable is, the more degradation or attenuation there is with this signal. Now, we can make a cable so long that the signal is so degraded by the time it gets to the destination that the destination can't understand what the signal is saying. So we have to move back then to a shorter and shorter cable until we can be certain that the destination will always understand the signal, that it hasn't been degraded so badly that the destination can still understand what the signal is conveying, the data part of the signal. Now this attenuation is due to several different types of phenomenon. The first one is called interference. This would be some sort of induced signal due to emanations from some other source. It might be a radio tower, it might be a wireless network, it might be a microwave oven that somebody's using in the break room. But electromagnetic interference in the air, it's all around us, is a source of interference. And if that signal that isn't wanted somehow finds itself on our wire that's carrying our data signal, that by definition is the interference. There's a phenomenon called impedance that is a component of high frequency data signaling. And if there is high speed data, of course, on our corporate networks, that's what we want, high speed data, we wind up with some sort of impedance characteristics or phenomenon occurring. Well, the impedance of the system must be very well tuned so that all components have the same impedance. And if there is some sort of mismatch, we wind up with a inefficient transmission through that area. Maybe it's a connector or maybe the cable got cut and we had to solder it back together, some sort of splice. These are sources of impedance mismatch. And then of course, as I said, if we have to put connectors together, the electrons running through our cable must jump from a pin on one connector into the wire on the adjacent connector where these connectors squeeze these pin the socket together. Well, this minuscule air gap, perhaps even microscopic air gap, is a source of signal loss. And they call this insertion loss. As the pin gets inserted into the jack, then we have this degradation or attenuation of signal. Now, the next definition down is interference. And as I said, interference is generally unwanted signal on your data-carrying conductor and it very often is induced by some sort of emanation from some other source. As we said, it could be a radio transmission tower, it could be you're very close to the airport and the radio communications between the tower and the airplanes around, it could be radar, it could be a wireless network. Many, many sources of emanated electromagnetic energy in the air all around us, if that signal gets induced into our wires, boom, this is interference. Now, we have this superset, it's called electromagnetic interference, that says, of course, that it uses electron flow and magnetism to push those electrons around, and this is the superset category, this is all forms of this interference. However, there's a subset called radio frequency interference, and a key term here is frequency. If there is any regularity to the interference, it's generally considered to be RFI, radio frequency interference. Frequency being frequently presents itself, and it's sort of some consistent pattern of interference. This is RFI, a subset of EMI, electromagnetic interference. And then we have another subset that is more of a transient noise, a very irregular, staticky, no pattern no regularity to the electromagnetic interference. So things like a lightning strike, or perhaps we turn on a fan that uses an electric motor and that fan induces some sort of static into our electrical system. 
this would be a type of transient noise. Again, a subset of electromagnetic interference. This is all bad for your data signal because I want to be able to read my binary ones and zeros out of my signal that's carrying my data. Well, if these signals are inducing themselves into my wires, this is doing nothing but causing confusion and havoc in my attempt to understand my emulated signal and the data that that signal is carrying. We've already discussed emanations to a large extent, but basically this deals with the electron flow through a wire induces or emanates a magnetic field in the air around the conductor carrying the electron. Now that in itself is an emanation. And if it was all by itself left alone in nothing but air or a vacuum, it wouldn't cause us too much of a problem. However, because we have many wires that might be adjacent to one another, like a cable run, you know, a bundle of Ethernet cables running through the walls or through the ceiling, and they're generally packed tightly together, the emanated signal from one wire induces signal interference into adjacent wires because they cross this airspace where this magnetic field is built. So these emanations cause interference and signal degradation. As the second wire gets interference induced into it, essentially that second wire stole energy from the first wire that was emanating. So the signal is being degraded in the first wire due to energy lost in the second wire. And the signal in the second wire is being degraded because it now has electron flow that isn't part of the intended signal. So emanations are a problem in this regard. Further, emanations are the source of data theft. So a bad guy, without actually even touching the wire, can use a detector and sense these electromagnetic fields around the wires and can identify the presence or absence of electron flow, which essentially is your signal carrying the data. So the bad guy can actually steal your data just by sensing these emanated signals into the air. Again, this is a security concern in addition to be a degradation of signal. And as we describe these emanations, I also described what is called crosstalk. As I'm sending an intended signal down a wire carrying data, it induces or emanates a magnetic field in the air around that wire. Well, an adjacent wire that penetrates that magnetic field is going to have energy induced into its data carrying signal. And this is called crosstalk. When one wire induces signal, unwanted signal, in the second wire, this is called crosstalk. And this is that degradation of signal and the theft of energy. And again, could be used to steal the actual data. So these are some of our core terms for network media. And these have implications relative to efficiency of transmission as well as the security aspects of the particular media.